Welcome guys to another session on dynamic programming solutions and today we are dealing with problem 6.18 coin change with at most one coin of each type. So with that let's look at the problem. The problem statement is that we have n coins x1 to xn and we have to make some value v and we can only use each coin at most once. So uh, if you looked at my previous solution for 6.17, we could use infinite number of coins and the problem is quite a bit simpler. But when we have to um, use only one, a coin only one time, this um, becomes a bit more complicated. And if you have solved the backpack problem, it's very similar to that. So the solution um, setup is very similar to the backpack problem that if you have um, these coins when you start to look at the value you start to grade the value at like when the value was one two three four so on till you reach the value v so we have uh, assigned the the um, column j or the um, the value here which is the second index here as the value of the, the what we have to make and these i are set up as the the uh, coins that we're going to try so when we try to make this value j um, the way we make it is that we try each coin and when we try a coin either we are successful in using the coin for that value or we are not and if we are not then we just pass the value to the previous stage and see if that value could be made from the coins in the previous stage and so obviously you have to rank these coins so that you have coins all arranged so that you can try a coin or a previous coin or the previous coins and so on but you always arrange them in a pattern so i've chosen the um, axis the y-axis so i've used the the i here as the first one and then the j is the value so the way the recursion is set up is that if you uh, fit that coin within that value then you have two options even though it fits you may take it or you may not take it right and if we end up taking it then it's this one because then you look at the previous layer or the previous coin and but you take this value out that xi coin that you took you take it out but it it does it's not required so you can still even though it fits you may choose to not take it and so you have to try that option as well that gives you all possible options right so you have to try both options either taking this or not taking this and obviously if the coin is too large for this value you cannot take it so you have to just try the previous layer and see that uh, in the previous layer or with the previous set of coins can you make this value j so that's the recursion um, keep in mind that you know the most important thing that people miss in this equation is the fact that if you can take it you're not you're not forced to take it because you can still make the value using some smaller coin right because um, if you're making a five but you have been given four and one you know you can you can make it with a five or you can make it with four and one so um, one of them may succeed and other may fail right so you have to um, kind of make sure that you have exhausted all possible options to make that that value otherwise you may miss some of the cases and you may get the wrong answer so with that um, let's now try to apply this in the matrix form so like i said earlier you know and uh, there's the coins on the left on the y-axis and the values we are trying to make on the the x-axis but now i'm going to set up the the boundary condition and, and remember the boundary con condition is non-trivial because you have to understand that um, when j equals zero when the value you're trying to make is zero then we can just fill all of these as if the value is zero I don't I can always also say that if I have no coins or one coin two coin three coin if I want to make a value zero I can always make it right so that's the boundary condition we want to set up but then if you have any value and I have no coins then you cannot make it so you set all of these as false and it took me uh, a little bit of time to make sure that this condition was right and as I take this first example you will see that um, I had to think through it and make sure all these conditions make sense otherwise it's gonna fail okay so um, the once you have set up this initial condition then we start to look at this next row and so obviously if you look at the value of one and the smallest coin we have is five cents um, 
then you cannot make it because obviously um, the coin is larger so if you go above pi minus 1j then you basically just go above and if you go above it's false so the answer is false and it's false here as well now the the interesting one becomes this first one where j equals 5 we know that we have 5 cent coin if you have 5 cent coin you fall in this in this part of the equation and you have to try two things one is right above which is you know even though you can take five what if you don't try to take five right so that's one condition here another is you take five which means that from five you have to remove the value of five and then check the remaining the remainder the remainder is right here and and we know that by initial condition that is also true so one of these has to be true right in this case this is true and therefore this value becomes true okay um, so then um, moving on the next one is let's say j equals six and we do j equals six then one possibility is you look at six here the other is you know you look at six minus five which is the value of one in the row above right which is the row above here um, because this is i minus one in these cases so you look in this and both of these are false see this one's false and this is also false so that you end up having it as false so now that sets up how we solve the remainder of the problem because all you have to do is just keep doing it and you finish up all these rows fill up all these rows and the answer would be sitting right here because if this is your last value that you're trying to make and these are all the coins that you have exhausted then this um, bottom right corner is your answer so um, that's the solution guys and um, the other thing I would like to mention is the order required is NV here because you have all the coins here, the N coins here and the value V here. So the order to do this problem is NV and um, and definitely keep in mind that you should probably spend you know a couple of minutes trying to understand this part and the way this part made sense to me uh, was that the initial condition is set up so that you know uh, try something like you know the very first coin when the value matches that coin that's where it starts to make sense that this has to be true right and then once you set that up the, the trivial parts you have to set up correctly and once you have set these up exactly like this then everything else just refers to them and you never go outside these bound of this boundary condition and all you have to do is just fill this matrix up at the end your answer is sitting right there so um, thanks so much for watching this episode with me, guys. And um, as always, if you like the episode, uh, do hit like or subscribe my channel if you want to see more videos in dynamic programming. And I'll bring you those uh, in the near future. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.